call to order the regular board meeting of May 11th, 2021. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, Clerk Green, yeah, please call the roll. Here. Here. Trustee Bosberg. Here. Clerk Berry. Treasurer Elliott. Here. Supervisor Ecovetti. Here. I would ask for an excuse for Clerk Berry and for us to refrain from calling her name on roll call votes for the duration of this meeting. If there's no objection, uh, please, please do that, Clerk Green. Item number five is presentations. There is one uh, presentation tonight, and it's a presentation to recognize Jerry Alexi for his community involvement. A couple of uh, words from me. I do have a, res a proclamation um, in front of me, if anyone would like, any board member would like to sign on to it. And that proclamation is to acknowledge Jerry Alexi for his community involvement. Jerry Alexi has lived in Chesterfield since 1976 with his wife of 46 years, Stephanie. Jerry served on the Chesterfield Township Board of Trustees from 2011 till 2012. He served on the Zoning Board of Appeals in 2012 for a year. Since 2013, Jerry has been a member of the Planning Commission and he currently holds the position of Vice Chairman. He also is the 119th State President of the Michigan Elks Association and the first State President of his lodge which is Warren Sterling Heights Elks Lodge number 2292. His term ends on May 22nd in 11 short days. I honor Jerry Alexi for his commitment to public service and I thank him for all he does for Chesterfield Township. And thank you very much, sir. I do have a proclamation um, here for you for your service and we appreciate all you do. I'll, um, I'm gonna see if any of the other board members would like to uh, sign on to it with me, and then we'll, uh, we'll get it in your hands. Mr. Supervisor, I would uh, enthusiastically Just. like to sign on with you. Um, I had the pleasure of serving with Mr. Alexi uh, on our planning commission most recently, uh, but uh, got to know Jerry a little bit better when he stepped up uh, when a trustee uh, left unexpectedly, and um, Jerry was willing to serve this township in the ca capacity of trustee He's a humble guy, but he is uh, very well read. Uh, typically when Mr. Alexi comes to uh, meetings to discuss an issue, he's um, very knowledgeable of whatever the facts are in front of him. He takes uh, whatever job he does very seriously and I respect that immensely in him. Um, he's, he's again a very uh, humble and quiet guy, uh, but one uh, most deserving of this recognition tonight. So I'd uh, be very happy to sign on with you for that proclamation as I'm sure as I'm talking, I'm noticing other board members nodding along. So uh, thank you, Jerry, and uh, I hope that this is a continuation proclamation. We, we, we love you here in the township, and, and any board or uh, service that you can spare, we greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Trustee Demink. And also, uh, congratulations, Jerry. You and I worked together up here on the board. Uh, for those two years you were here, I remember uh, giving you a plaque when you left, along with uh, my old counterpart, Michelle Fitch and worked with you on planning over the years and everything else, and uh, it's been a pleasure, and I'm definitely signing on also, Mr. Spires. Thank you. I know this was a surprise to you. We did get reached out. Um, we do from time to time. Um, I think it's been a heck of a year. And last week was Public Service Rec Recognition, Recognition Week, and um, we thought it was appropriate. So thank you for your service, and 
unique one that you're not going anywhere quickly, so thank you. We're gonna move on to uh, department reports. Yeah, maybe a round of applause. Department reports, and I am gonna have um, some reports that I wanna update us on, and I I'll go first, and then we'll, uh, we'll bring it up to the board and to the department heads. I wanna start with the Macomb County Department of Roads Limestone Program. There will be an item considered in, with the consent agenda. Hold on, back me up here. Uh, we are gonna be included for three miles this year, shown in yellow. Um, that would bring us, we had, we had one mile in 2018, three miles shown in, uh, uh oh, what's going on there? Three miles shown in green in 2019, 2020, we had four miles. We were lucky that one more mile became available, and the three miles this year are shown in purple, which is going to be the rest of 25 mile, Chesterfield, and, uh, and part of uh, Bates. The next item I want to touch base on is the Brandenburg Shoreline Restoration. Going to be opening on Memorial Weekend. Season parking and boat launch passes can be purchased in advance through the treasurer's office. Sport courts rehab rehabilitation is underway. Hold on, we got to back up one here. Sport court rehabilitation is underway. We ask that the public is patient and courteous. The lawn will not fully be established in all areas of the park. It's going to take some time. And we also have an opportunity to replace the flagpole, which is shown on the bottom of this picture via a donation. And that will be coming um, potentially very, very quickly. Uh, if we do need an action item on that, I am more than willing to put an agenda item in on the, uh, add an addendum to the tonight's agenda. It will be a donated um, item if it does happen. The next slide. Um, the cove area is underway as well. The plantings will start taking place on Monday and it will take a couple of weeks. NOAA is providing temporary netting and paying for it um, to protect the plantings. Hold on, we're going a little bit too ahead of us here. We got a different program. And we also ask the public um, until that cove area um, and the plantings take to um, stay only on the path that is heading down to the shore. The next item, or I, just, I, guess, I guess the final thing on Brandenburg Shoreline is just a thank you to the Great Lakes Restoration, the Great Lakes Commission, Orchard Hills, and the Chesterfield Township team. Karen, why is it automatically going? <laughs> okay, let me see if I get back hold of it. Next one I wanna point out is Salt River. It's a very good story, and it's one that Karen, <laughs> it's one that um, is worth telling, and that is if we can take our entire Salt River Green, Salt River frontage through Chesterfield Township, from Lake, uh, from Acre Bay to 26 Mile Road, and open that up into a greenway open space corridor. Um, the story is worth telling and people are watching from around the state who could fund something like this and it's something that we are pursuing. The first portion of this would be from Anchor Bay to 23 Mile and as you can see we have Brandenburg Park anchoring Weber Paddle Park, the Salt River Marsh Restoration which is due for a two to three million dollar EPA grant. and the Salt River Nature Center. This is this portion of it. The Marina District and this potential connector um, are ones that are being worked on. The next section of this is from 23 to 24 mile. Um, Trustee Joseph and I started this discussion um, several years back, pretty much the day I walked in the door, about what could be done with the former Salt River Golf Course for recreation uses. We are exploring every possible partnership um, and opportunity out there to try to find a way to turn that into a recreation use. The, the piece after that would be between 23 mile and 24 mile. Lots of opportunity to keep going. I wanna touch base on from Washington to I-94 as well, which would be the next section. There's multiple parcels here that do have development pressure and opportunities to 
utilize the Salt River floodplain as much as possible for paths and recreation. The key being a safe way over or under 94, and the ending of the Salt River Greenway would go through Pollard Park. However, we have a, very, a good opportunity to solve one of the elusive ways over or under 94. We're gonna need six of these eventually for, at each of our crossings. This one, we may very well be able to utilize an under I-94 at a very cost efficient model. With the ultimate vision of connecting our little piece of heaven here in Chesterfield Township to the Macomb Orchard Trail, oop, we're jumping across the 23 mile, to the Macomb Orchard Trail and the Freedom Trail as part of the Great Lakes Way project for the state of Michigan. Um, that's the vision. Our story is worth, worth, uh, worth telling. I do want to talk about 23 Mile Road, um, and there will be a whole lot more information coming out on this corridor. The complications of, of a road, road like 23 Mile Road with the various jurisdictions, um, part of it's under Macomb Count, um, um, Michigan Department of Transportation, Macomb TSC, part of it's under MDOT's state, the intersection at I-94, and part of it's under the Macomb County Department of Roads. But the one I wanna focus on is the worst section of road in Chesterfield Township, and that is from the railroad tracks to Gratiot on 23 Mile Road. And the, I'm just gonna tell you the facts. And the facts are, this is not proposed for a complete reconstruction until 2023. It is in deplorable condition right now and almost impassable. These are, this is a Macomb County Department of Roads road. This, the funding from this comes from the federal, and from all of our roads come from federal and state gas tax dollars. We are township, we do not receive or have jurisdiction over any of these roads. The ask has been there and the ask will continue to be there. We are utilizing and exploring every possible grant opportunity and earmark opportunity, both us and the state of Michigan. There's some optimistic things happening in the terms of earmarks from both the federal and state level that could push this project up from 2022 or from 2023 to next year or, um, or a little bit earlier. In the meantime, the Macomb County Department of Roads will be maintaining this as, as good as they can. Um, the problem is this section is deteriorated to um, a place where a, mill and, a milling is not possible because it will fall apart. Coal patching and hot patching does not stick. This is gonna be one that's gonna be with us for several years and we will continue to, uh, to find a way to make it passable until the federal monies come at which time we expect 23 Mile Road to be rebuilt from Gratiot to Fairchild, and it will be approximately a $5 million project that will require a 20% match from Chesterfield Township. There will be more to come on, the, uh, on that specific piece as it, uh, as it continues to deteriorate. And uh, that is it for my department reports. Any further, uh, Reports from the board, Trustee Domingue. This is from Le Leisure Services. 55 and older friends, you're invited to travel by highway coach with Leisure Services to the Charles H. Wright Museum or the Detroit Zoo. These day trips takes place on May 28th and June 11th and are available at cost free to our senior citizen community. You can call 949-0400 extension four for day and time specifics. Both trips include transportation and admittance. Souvenirs and food are on your own. You can save time at the gate by purchasing your park passes now. The fee to enter Brander Park is $5 per day or a season pass can be bought that will save you time and money. Passes are required for entry from May 27th till September 7th. Get yours at the Chesterfield Municipal Office's Treasury Department, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30. Cash or credit card accepted, in-person sales only. And be prepared for a season of outdoor fun, resurface sports courts, including pickleball, a newly softened shoreline that increases the fish habitats and a nautical themed splash pad. And lastly, registration for summer baseball is taking place now through the May 21st. Summer season begins the first week of July. Get your gear ready, call the Leisure Service Department, 949-0400, extension four for more details. 
Thank you, sir. Trustee Joseph. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Just a brief uh, update uh, to the board from the Public Safety Committee. Uh, Trustee Anderson and I met uh, with Director Kirsten and his administrative team over at the uh, fire station on 22 Mile Road this month. And um, we took a tour. We looked at some of the uh, incredible things that have been done. Uh, the outside of the building, anybody who drives by knows, is, is um, fairly buttoned up and uh, looks great. The addition uh, in the upstairs is um, really just astounding. It's, it's really quite a beautiful station. The remaining um, issues were never part of the overall redesign. They were something that I think the uh, public safety team together with uh, Mr. Supervisor Yu and the uh, facilities and operations team took a look at and said it would be a great opportunity to enhance and upgrade internally um, some of the um, uh, lower level uh, offices and uh, the intention is to bring about some training facilities and make that um, more of a welcoming space to the public at large. Um, anybody who recalls going into that building prior to the redesign uh, can tell you that the uh, vestibule area that would normally accompany, like, welcome people coming in from the outside was actually a converted sleeping quarters of some kind. So there had been a number of kind of makeshift uh, changes to that building that are long gone. Um, the issue that we have now is um, trying to get as much of the project completed with internal staff and um, that's something that uh, Mr. Sonnenberg and I spent some time talking about today and I appreciated the way he uh, laid out for me the vision and the timeline. Um, he's working closely with Director uh, Kirsten to make sure that we we and I and I want to I want to be very clear here. We have no structural issues that compromise operations. These are all sort of um, um, wish list things that we would like to get done. Uh, so they are sort of being folded into the uh, health and safety demands that the uh, facilities and operation team has. Um, we're hoping to get those uh, done. There's a fairly formal list, uh, what they call a punch list, to take a look at the um, work that can be done and should be done by vendors, uh, some repairs uh, that need to be made and then uh, some internal work. So um, all this being done uh, for a number of reasons, many of which have to do with the fact that this year um, uh, police, um, all of the events that normally occur in May, uh, police recognition, um, while they are still being held virtually, any in-person um, law enforcement activities are um, slated to be incorporated with fire safety, uh, which occurs in the fall. Uh, one of the ideas is to do uh, some things, perhaps with an, even an open house, uh, so that the public can see the um, transformation of Fire Station 2. Um, it is the most uh, utilized fire station in terms of number of calls, and they have been monitoring very closely the uh, run times uh, since the closing of the station on Jefferson. Uh, there have been no incidences since the closing of the fire station on Jefferson that exceed the national guidelines with regard to response times. Uh, they all come in uh, in every scenario um, within the uh, required call time uh, guidelines set by the national standards. So um, a lot of progress over there and a lot more to go. And uh, Trustee Anderson and I will keep the board abreast of the things that are changing uh, as it relates to the fire station. Thank you. Thank you. I need department heads. I believe Director Kirsten has one. Just a quick update on our COVID vaccination site, which is underway still here in the township for the next two weeks. But to date, we have ad administered over 5,000 vaccinations at this location. Uh, it continues to operate strong. Again, two more weeks in this facility, and we will be shut down, and we will deem this a complete success. Uh, we thank the township, the employees, the staff here, the senior center, Amanda, for all of their help, and we, uh, we it was a, 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 a opportunity that we, uh, I think, highlights our community. Thank you. Any further department reports? Moving on to item number seven, the consent agenda. Consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered routine by the board and will be enacted in one motion. There's no separate discussion of these items. 
If discussion of any items is required by a board member, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Public comments on the consent agenda items are permitted. 7A, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of April 27th, 2021. 7B, approval of the agenda with addendum if necessary. 7C, approval of the payment of bills as submitted by the finance department. 7D, approve a recommendation by Public Works to partner with Macomb County Department of Roads to improve three miles of gravel roads within Chesterfield Township with the 10% township match of $23,205 from GL number 101-446-929.000. Item 7E, approve a recommendation by Public Works to purchase meters and meter components from Ferguson Waterworks at a total cost of $17,551.38 from GL 591-542-740.000. Thank you, do I, do I have a motion? Motion to approve the consent agenda Mo is presented. Motion by Trustee Domingue. Support. Support by Trustee Vosberg. Discussion. Any comments from the public? Motion by Trustee Domingue. Support by Trustee Vosberg to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Clerk Greenia, please call the roll. Domingue. Aye. Vosberg. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Joseph. Aye. Elliot. Aye. Akabedi. Aye. Motion passes. Item 8 is the regular agenda. Item 8A. Item 8A. Adopt a proclamation to declare National Police Week for May 9, 2021 through May 15, 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. Support. Motion by Trustee Anderson. Support by Trustee Domingue. Treasurer Elliott. The proclamation is um, for us to pay, pay tribute to those who gave their lives in the line of duty. It, is, it was established by a joint resolution of Congress in 1962 to, for National Police Week, pay special recognition to those law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty and for the safety and protection of others. In 1962, President Kennedy proclaimed May 15th as National Police Officers Memorial Day and the calendar week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. Um, on behalf of the, I believe on behalf of the board, we'd like to thank our law enforcement officers and um, submit this proclamation. Any comments from the board, Trustee Domingue? I'm good. One, one from me, um, on this Thursday, there will be a live stream event at 8 p.m. And if you uh, check the internet and Google the candlelight vigil, it'll be the 33rd candlelight vigil. Um, it's a pretty powerful event. Um, we've had a tough, tough 2020 in the beginning of 2021 as a nation. Um, but no, not, not many groups of public servants have, have had a tougher 20. 2021 than our police officers. So I urge you to, uh, if you have time to watch that vigil, um, it'd be the 33rd time. Normally there's big events in DC and around the country. This time it will be virtual. And once we get back to normal, there'll be an event planned this fall. 394 names of fallen police officers will be, uh, will be added to the wall this year. Any comments from the public on item 8A? Trustee Anderson. Yeah, thank you, sir. Just uh, we uh, we're doing interviews over the police station today, and one of the one of the officers brought up that five officers died yesterday in this country, and so um, as a former officer, my heart goes out, and I think we all do. That's uh, these men and women are keeping us safe. Uh, they are our wives, our husbands, our sons, our daughters, and uh, it's uh, the times we're living in, with the media is portraying things. Uh, my heart really goes out to every single family or officer out there. So that's all I just wanted to mention. Thank you. Thank you to Treasurer Elliott for bringing this forward and Trustee Anderson and Trustee Domingue for your service and protecting us. Motion by Trustee Anderson, support by Trustee Domingue to approve item 8A as submitted. Clerk Greenia, please call the roll. Anderson. Aye. 
Domingue? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Bosberg? Aye. Elliott? Aye. Acovetti? Aye. Motion passes. Item 8B. Item 8B, approve a request by Trustee Joseph to adopt a proclamation recognizing the month of June 2021 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Joseph. Is there support? Support. Support by Trustee Anderson. Trustee Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this. Uh, uh, was initially presented as a resolution and after uh, speaking with a couple of my fellow board members uh, we changed the format to a proclamation um, there's uh, some subtle differences there but it seemed more consistent with the uh, history of the township and how we uh, proclaim things that this was more appropriately uh, packaged as a proclamation this um, request for proclamation or resolution comes to us um, for the second or third year in a row from an organization here in the county by the name of Macomb County Pride, a very dedicated group of individuals who have uh, listed as their mission the um, diversity, inclusion, and mutual respect of the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, they're a great resource uh, for that community in the county. Um, and again, their mission is to create a supportive environment uh, for that community and to be a resource. Uh, their statement of inclusion includes uh, that, quote, we respect and affirm the dignity of all people and promise to create pathways for inclusivity and support and opportunities for all. Uh, we are focused on fo fostering a vibrant culture where everyone is respected and has a great sense of belonging. As I indicated to my fellow board members in the executive summary, um, I wholeheartedly believe with this organization's mission and statements of inclusion, um, primarily because they are consistent with my own beliefs as well as what I believe to be our wonderful community. It is, um, after talking extensively with Trustee Vosberg, um, fundamentally the golden rule. The, 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 the rule is to treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. There's nothing in this proclamation that requires anyone to, I think, take uh, uh, deviation from any religious beliefs that you may hold and it is um, I think if you were to to uh, enact some religious uh, basis for the evaluation of this it is simply uh, to love your neighbor and that is uh, a commandment uh, that requires us to love them without exception we don't qualify if they're gay straight poor black uh, what religion um, simply to love our neighbor the um, proclamation outlines a number of things that I think reinforce the strengths of our township and again um, they call upon us to simply recognize one another as uh, individuals deserving of respect uh, to celebrate authenticity and above all love uh, it is uh, uh, part of a movement that uh, Macomb County Pride has uh, an endeavor that they've taken on to bring this proclamation or a version of to all communities in Macomb County. Last year they were successful in um, being recognized by seven uh, separate municipalities. Uh, tonight as we uh, discuss this proclamation, I believe the city of Roseville is also, um, and we have two more communities uh, set to discuss this at their uh, May meetings in preparation for June, which is recognized nationally as Pride Month. Um, uh, this, um, as I say, uh, is important to me for many reasons. Um, and uh, to be quite honest with you and in full disclosure, a uh, person that I admire greatly in this world is my daughter. Um, she has been a great help to me in understanding the importance of this uh, proclamation. Uh, it is in her uh, honor that I uh, have taken on a tremendous education process to immerse myself and understand more uh, about this community. Um, it's a, a wonderful group of people that I've been exposed to who are very giving of each other and uh, very committed to uh, making this world a better place, to be perfectly honest. So uh, I'm very proud to bring this forward and uh, look to find pathways forward in our community that are aligned with what we all believe to be uh, 
things that are just uh, very commonly held beliefs of love and acceptance. I recognize that people feel very strongly uh, about uh, certain elements of, of this sort of movement. And while I'll try to steer clear of the things that bind us, I will look for the things that, uh, that, that, can, that, that cause us separation and focus instead on the things that bind us. I believe they're numerous. And uh, this proclamation is a, is, a, is a great first step, in my opinion, and I would appreciate your support. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, Trustee Joseph. Any further comments from the board? Any comments from the public on item 8B? We have a motion by Trustee Joseph, support by Trustee Anderson to approve item 8B as submitted. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Joseph. Item 8C. <clears throat> Item 8C. Approve a recommendation by Public Works to adopt resolution number 2021-10, approving the updated non-residential industrial waste control charges and pollutant surcharges effective July 1, 2021. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Trustee Vosburgh. Support. Oh, support by Treasurer Elliott. Assistant Director Johnson, welcome back. Yes, good welcome to see you guys back. again in person. Uh, these uh, charges are essentially just passed through from Great Lakes Water Authority to all user, non-residential users of our system. So there is no, um, the only increase that we have is just to match the, the costs involved here. No additional costs to strictly pass through. From Great Lakes Water. If there are any questions, feel free to ask about it, though. Questions from the board. Every year, this time, um, this comes in front of us. Yes. Any questions from the board on item 8C? Comments from the public on item 8C. We have a motion by Trustee Vosburg, support by Treasurer Elliott, to approve item 8C as submitted. Clerk Greenia, please call the roll. Vosburg. Aye. Elliott. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Domink? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Acabetti? Aye. Thank Motion you. passes. Thank you. Item 8D. Item 8D. Approve a recommendation by the Planning Commission to adopt Resolution 2021 11 to adopt the Chesterfield Township 2021 Master Plan. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Support. Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Treasurer Elliott. Director Palin is here along with uh, Rod Arrero with Giffels Webster. Oh, kind of fitting, Mr. Alexi, this has been a multi-year process and um, maybe say a couple words. Mm -hmm. Director Palin and Rod. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. and. Uh, other board members, I just want to thank everyone for their support throughout this process. Um, you know, we've had a couple of joint meetings with the Planning Commission um, to get to this point. So I'm happy we're here, looking forward to, to moving forward with it. And I'm going to turn it over to Rod if you have anything to add. Good evening. Uh, Rod Arroyo with Givels Webster. It's a pleasure to be here, pleasure to uh, present for your consideration uh, the master plan for Chesterfield Township. As um, Jonathan had mentioned, we have uh, been working very hard with the Planning Commission and the Township Board. We appreciate the involvement of the Township Board in this process. Um, as you know, by, by the Michigan Planning Enabling Act, the Planning Commission is the body that's responsible for drafting the master plan, but ultimately uh, having the involvement of the citizens uh, and having the involvement of the Township Board strengthens the document as it, as it goes through the process. And uh, we appreciate your involvement in, in, the, in those joint meetings that were held, uh, and, and particularly even just kicking it off. And we kind of tried to set the tone that this is a, this is a project that's going to be um, built from the ground up. We want, we had a lot of opportunity for citizen participation. Um, we had multiple open houses, and um, we're really uh, excited with the comments that we received. And um, we think it, it reflects the vision that uh, the Planning Commission listened to what was heard. Planning Commission listened to what the Township Board, um, the comments in terms of ideas and strengths and weaknesses and opportunities. And uh, we believe it's, it's reflected in the document. So with that, I'll turn it back to you and um, to, to 
available to answer any questions. It's been a long process, and I would like to start with uh, Trustee Joseph making comments. Um, as a member of the Planning Commission, when this began, um, Trustee Joseph. Thank you. Um, I think uh, this, this started um, really full circle in, in, in actuality, and that was Trustee Domingue on the Planning Commission. Uh, Mr. Alexi is, uh, is here tonight, and uh, they worked uh, very, very hard on a update to our master plan uh, for a good chunk of Trustee Domingue's term and uh, the pr our, our previous board four plus years ago. Uh, I took over from Trustee Domingue and uh, together with uh, other planning commission uh, members uh, worked to, to bring something forward. Um, it was after the inclusion of a new uh, planning vendor, uh, Mr. Arroyo and his team, where I think we got the most amount of push and steam. And it was for the first time in my experience being in the township is that the, the master plan transitioned from being a, um, and I don't say this disrespectfully, a, a rehashing of the township's historical uh, position to one of vision. Uh, so it is, uh, I think, consistent with a number of communities as I've looked at master plans from other communities. The updated version, 80% um, of it uh, restates where the township or the city is at. And in this case, we of course acknowledge uh, existing ordinances and, and um, zones and so forth, but um, it was the first master plan that I had ever seen and a number of my fellow planning commission members had ever seen where we took real bold initiatives for the future uh, from mixed use residential and taking into account uh, really pressing trends and changes in the way a city or a municipality, a township is put together. Everything from something as simple as a drive through um, which you wouldn't think would be, uh, you know, a, a very involved uh, sort of dissertation and study, but when you look at uh, retail trends and trends in uh, the purchase of food, um, everybody is buying and and you know transacting uh, their 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 meals in an app. Uh, we don't go to a drive-through typically anymore and order through one window and pick up through the next, and we've seen that. Um, heavily exacerbated by the COVID pandemic, but the transaction is done. By the time I arrive to the establishment, the transaction has already been ordered, prepared, and paid for. Um, do I need to wait in a staging area and when you're putting together the, the site plans for a, a new establishment, do you need to factor in all the directional signage and all the things that go with a traditional drive-through? When the reality is, is you go into the, you know, you go into the restaurant, your order uh, is printed out and it's on a shelf somewhere. There's no, there's no drive-through or there's curbside delivery. So um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't think that this could so severely impact your uh, master plan and the way that you approve building sites and so forth, but it does. And I was very grateful uh, to work with Mr. Arroyo. He understands these things uh, better than most and uh, is able to bring it to the planning team uh, in a very digestible way and it helps our vendors, it helps uh, our um, community in terms of making sure we don't have bottlenecks and uh, long lines that, you know, unfortunately we still see remnants of this that extend out onto 23 mile road, people trying to get a, maybe a Starbucks at a peak time. Uh, but those days are coming to an end with the new developments that are going in under the direction of our uh, planner and our planning team in-house uh, and our master plan encapsulates that very well. So uh, I'm very proud to be a part of that. And I know Trustee Domingue um, is happy to be back in terms of starting it and then seeing it as the commission member responsible uh, li liaison capacity to, to see this finally closed out. As, as you said, it's been a very, very long journey and I'm glad that uh, we're here. So thank you. Thank you, any further Trustee Domingue? It's been a long process, like started several years ago with, when I was on it. Uh, Paul Miller, Rick LaBelle, Jerry started his long work. And then uh, when David replaced me, David put four years into it. Once uh, this board hired Giffels Webster with Rod, you've done an excellent job with Jonathan. I commend you both. Uh, it's been a great team. And the few months that I've been on now, it's been great. David, you did great work for the four years. And uh, the master plan is going to work well. In fact, that we had a meeting last week. and. We followed the master plan, even though there were some people that wanted something different in that area, we went what was on the master plan, and uh, that's 
I think that's our vision and that's what we need to work off. So uh, Rod, Jonathan, Planning Commission members, you guys do a great job and uh, we'll see where it takes us in the next uh, three years and six months. Thanks. Any further comments from the board? Um, what a what what a moment! This is a technical step. Technically, we do not need to do this pursuant to the uh, to, pursuant to the act. But I'm glad we are. We're going to adopt a resolution that adopts this document. Um, tonight's board agenda is long. If you download the whole packet, and a majority of it is this this plan, this master plan, this roadmap. Um, I'm excited about the fact that it's updated, and the timing is perfect. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of changes. And I'm especially excited about the opportunities it will bring us. Um, the opportunities for the inclusion of a non-motorized path plan, the, the, the complete streets portion of this, the highlighting of our natural resources, the Salt River Corridor, the Jefferson um, Hamlets, that, that option, the, um, the opportunity that is before us on 26 mile and I-94 at County Line Crossing, um, if it comes to fruition. The, the grants and the investments that this document will bring, this is how we get our, our 23 mile road um, interchange. You know, I'm driving through Oakland County and I'm envious of the diverging diamonds and the, the 100 to 200 million dollar infrastructure improvements for their interchanges and their safe ways across 94. This plan will get us that, it will get us those federal dollars back here to Chesterfield along with the uh, the grants we need to connect our community from a non-motorized path program. So I couldn't be prouder of the entire team, former boards, this dates back uh, three, four boards ago to the last board to, uh, to this board and this marks the pinnacle of a very long process and a very, very necessary one and thank you to uh, Rod for your stewardship on this. Comments from the public on item 8D. Welcome. I sign in, so official. Um, this uh, plan is uh, very important to the residents of Chesterfield Township. Uh, I know there was a lot of work put into it, uh, and at a at a cost uh, to the residents. Um, going through the master plan and reviewing it, um, there's mention of uh, Selfridge Air National Guard two times in the master plan. And one of the, I'll quote it, says, Selfridge Air National Guard, the presence of Selfridge has created a stable source of employment and tax revenue for local economies for many years. In 2008, to address Michigan changes, Selfridge Air National Guard updated uh, their uh, air installation compatible use zones, which included economic impact assessment of the base and its surrounding communities. Okay, um, I, I did a little research. Uh, Selfridge is in Harrison Township. Chesterfield does not benefit from any direct tax revenues from Selfridge. Uh, if you go on the Department of Defense uh, website um, by zip code, you can find out the revenues that the Department of Defense uh, uh, has placed with uh, commercial entities. Um, if you look at that data, it's been getting to be less and less. It's shrinking. It's down to about $2.5 million in gross revenues. Um, what, what has happened is Burtek and Company was one of the largest defense contractors in Chesterfield Township that was included in the uh, Department of Defense data. It had an award of $46,540,000 over a 13-year period. Beertech closed its doors in 2016 and laid off 160 employees. Chesterfield Township in 2003 awarded Beertech an industrial facilities exemption certificate that expired in 2013, which reduced their tax base during the 10 years of operation. 
International Star Corporation was another defense contractor that made rubber gaskets and seals for the Department of Defense. Their income was $286,000 annually. It went out of business in 2010 and laid off 52 employees. The Sibyl Manor was vacated in 2006. The complex consisted of 352 housing units. The local school districts incurred a loss for per, per pupil state revenue after making investments in a second grade school and a, a new high school to accommodate the military families that they still have to support. Selfridge, while I was doing all of this uh, research, uh, is on the list for Michigan's, one of Michigan's largest PFAS environmentally, uh, environmental polluter with no, no abatement plan approved by Michigan Eagle to date. Um, I, this, this master plan is supposed to be important to the Chesterfield residents and the economic boon and everything that we're talking about in the master plan, if you look at the data that's out there from the Department of Defense, you look at the tax revenues that uh, it says that the master plan says that Chesterfield is benefiting from, because this master plan is supposed to be for Chesterfield, not for the other communities. I, 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 don't, I don't really see it. Uh, um, I've asked before for actual data as how um, the revenues are going to come to the township from the air base and I never get any information so I went out to get my own uh, it, it doesn't look too promising Thank if, you. I, if I could a little house cleaning could you state your name and address for, just for the record your name and address for the record please my name is Paul S. Lafada 48055 Mallard Thank Chesterfield you. Township Thank you any further public comment Any further board comment? Trustee Joseph. Yeah, I just um, just as a um, acknowledgement of the speaker and Treasurer Lafada has been pretty vocal on his concerns about Selfridge um, and as they appear in the master plan, I, I share some of his concerns and um, I am, I, and I remain uh, very concerned about um, what the use of that base means to our community, uh, particularly the residents that live near the base. Uh, and the businesses that live near the base. Um, recently, I think uh, many of the board members will hopefully are aware that um, uh, Congresswoman McLean has made a yet another pitch uh, to the Department of Defense for the inclusion of a training utilization of the F-35 that a, a foreign government who has uh, entered into contract with the United States uh, Department of Defense for the purchase of F-35s uh, would undergo training uh, on that aircraft and uh, is her vision and her pitch uh, to bring that training operation here to Selfridge. So it is another um, indication that there is strong interest, at least from our uh, elected officials, to bring the F-35 in some capacity here. And um, they're very big on the, um, very big on the uh, highlights of how it enhances the region and the state and potentially even the uh, preparedness of the country. Um, as elected officials here, I share uh, the sentiment that says we have an obligation to investigate also the vibrancy of our community. Um, I, again, do share some of the concerns uh, that were highlighted uh, by the speaker, and Mr. Lafada is correct uh, in a number of those things uh, with regard to what does this uh, relationship bring specifically to Chesterfield Township in the end. Um, I'm enthusiastically in support of the master plan because I feel that, uh, you know, any document, especially one with this size and scope, um, I may not find myself in 100% agreement with the entirety, uh, but there is uh, overwhelming uh, evidence to support that this master plan is uh, very uh, comprehensive and very much uh, puts the township on the right path. So, uh, you know, a document that is 95% uh, my friend is not 5% my enemy. So uh, I think there is plenty of good and solid things in there, uh, but I do appreciate um, uh, Mr. Lafada's comments and it's something that we will continue to monitor and talk about in the, um, 
the um, uh, compatibility studies that are continue to go on between uh, the Department of Defense and Macomb County. Uh, this board has uh, representation there and I hope that that continues. So uh, again, thank you for the comments and thank you for your continued concern about the vibrancy of that base as it relates to um, the economic and, and quality of life impacts that it has potentially on Chesterfield. Thank you. Thank you, any further comments from the board? Um, this process that it should be noted, uh, look at not only internal stakeholders, but external stakeholders. And we have a lot of external stakeholders. Internally, we looked at our internal team, residents, a whole bunch of focus groups. And we're also required to look at external stakeholders. Some are known and some aren't, like our neighboring communities, or some are obvious and some aren't. Neighboring communities such as New Baltimore, Ira, Casco, Lenox, New Haven, Clinton, Macomb, Harrison, and the Selfridge Air National Guard Base. They are an external stakeholder, just like one of our neighboring communities, um, when they redo their master plan, um, they, we're, we're an external, external stakeholder, so we can regionally coordinate on all of our, our land use issues. Um, nothing's more of, a, more of a disaster, especially with some of the issues, the land use issues coming down like uh, marijuana and other things when you've got neighboring communities that aren't on the same page together. And you got industrial uses backed up to residential uses. Um, there's no question that Selfridge Air National Guard Base is a major external stakeholder for Chesterfield Township. Um, that is an Air Force base that, um, in my opinion, in my view, I will fight vigorously to ensure that it remains a military-only Air Force base. And I think the majority of our township also uh, agrees with that. A lot of the decisions on um, what the next mission will be there is uh, above us. When that does come, we will have every and all opportunity to participate. If anything, this plan will position us in a much better play place to make sure that their uses um, are compatible with ours. But I do thank you, the speaker, for his comments, and I look forward to uh, the next couple chapters and see what the future of Selfridge as an Air Force-only military base uh, brings and the opportunities that brings to, uh, to Chesterfield Township, because if it's not an Air Force only base, we've got, um, we've got a real mess on our hands here in, uh, in Chesterfield. Uh, tre Treasurer Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, I appreciate everybody who's worked very hard on this master plan, and um, I also wanted to address the speaker. Um, you said that there was, you were having a hard time finding um, any place where there was statistics around the Department of Defense and Selfridge. Um, it's HTTPS, um, so on the web, business.macombgov.org slash business industries defense. And um, if, if you want after this meeting, I can um, write that down and give it to you. Um, so the key statistics there are there's 25,106 total jobs here in Macomb County. Uh, total job growth in Macomb County from 2010 to 2020 is plus 125 percent. Um, that's a few of the statistics that are on there. A, it's, a, it's a great resource and it um, talks about all the different industries in Macomb and maybe um, they can break it down for Chesterfield for you at the Planning and Economic Development. Thank you. We have a motion by Trustee to make. Uh, Trustee Joseph. Um, uh, just to, to uh, Treasurer Elliott's uh, uh, offer for help. The um, contracts that you cite are Macomb County contracts, and we uh, discussed that uh, in previous boards when we passed the resolution, when the board passed the resolution. The question was and will remain what portion of those contracts are in Chesterfield? And I understood uh, uh, Treasurer LaFarge's comments then. Uh, and now um, to reflect that there is not a lot. There is not a lot. And uh, the active contract at the time that we had this debate about. Sorry. Thanks. Um, the, uh, the, the, the ongoing, and I won't repeat the whole thing, but the ongoing debate is not about the contracts for the county. It is the contract specific to Chesterfield. Uh, and the reason that that is significant is because the uh, the positioning of the runway um, really does create some potential problems for what they call the APZ uh, areas slightly north 
of the base, and that is um, directly at one of the biggest developments we have in the township, and that is the South End development. If you know the Cabela's and the Home Goods and the BJ's, that is a flight path that uh, extends past the uh, runway. Uh, so, uh, Treasurer Lafada's comments then and again tonight talk about the uh, benefit for the direct uh, residents here in the way of contract and the businesses here in Chesterfield contract, uh, in, in, in Chesterfield. And taking it a step further, um, anytime there's big money uh, and it's a regional money maker, I think it's fair. Uh, to show up uh, as a representative of Chesterfield and say, what about us? Uh, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a defiance of patriotism in any way to say we bear a rather large burden in terms of sacrifice associated with the uh, goodness of the, the greater good, which is the region, but um, what about our contracts? And when it was researched, um, and the uh, federal government has a number of websites where you can go and see, one of which uh, the Treasurer Elliott you mentioned tonight. Um, we found a number of like uh, catering contracts for local Chesterfield businesses who maybe catered meetings on the base, but what we're interested in is uh, much bigger contracts, maybe, maybe something that could fill up our uh, yet to be fully developed manufacturing areas. And so what those contracts look like for Chesterfield residents is a, is a valid uh, discussion and it's one that we may have to claw our way from the kitty table at the Thanksgiving and get to the big table to say what about us and so it won't be sufficient to simply say it's great for the region it's great for the country it's great for Macomb County all of those things are true but it should be great for Chesterfield too especially Mr. Supervisor when you're talking about the very first slide where we got what is arguably an impassable stretch of road and then you say, uh, well, what about all of the resources and financial gain that comes to the county for having the base? How about a piece of that pie to give us a road that we can actually get to Meyer or the new Olive Garden on without losing a tie rod on? See, those are fair statements and, and good arguments. It's just that when you make them in a crowded room of people who are very, very patriotic, you run the risk of looking like Al Qaeda, like somehow you're not patriotic. And Craig, it's not, it's, 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 try it's, to stay on the master plan. sorry, uh, this was a, this, this has become a, a spinoff of the master plan. Just say it a couple again. times and give sorry. it nexus. Sorry, <laughs> thank you. You're, 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 you're accurate there. That's true. Uh, again, uh, the master plan is, um, uh, mentions this very slightly and, um, overall, um, I'm okay with, with the, the level that the master plan reflects the future of Selfridge. So. A um, couple of things to consider moving forward, and thanks for allowing me to go a little askew. Thank you. We have a motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Treasurer Elliott to approve item 8D as submitted. Clerk Greenia, please call the roll. Domingue? Aye. Elliott? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Bosberg? Aye. Ecovetti? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Rod and Jonathan. Item 8E. Item 8E, approve the Planning Commission's recommendation to rezone parcel 09-15-400-018 from C1 local commercial to C3 general commercial. Do I have a motion? Support. Motion, motion by Trustee Domingue. Do I have a motion? You're the motion maker. Is there support for Trustee Domingue's motion? Right. Su support. Support by Trustee Vosberg. Okay. Discussion and uh, Mr. Palin. Oh, I'm sorry. Zoom, I can see. Got to. Treasurer Elliott, support by Treasurer Elliott. Director Palin. Thank you. Uh, this item went to public hearing in front of the Planning Commission. They are recommending approval. Uh, this is the old TCF bank that's in the premier bowling alley shopping center. Um, they found it to be consistent with the master plan, both previous and newly adopted. And um, it is consistent with the surrounding zonings as well, so they are recommending approval. Comments from the board? There's more of a question for Trustee Domingue. In terms of um, uh, public input during this uh, hearing, can you give the uh, board a breakdown of uh, just this general feeling of the public in that, in that area, and were there, were there any objections? No, Jonathan, you've got more notes on it than I do. 
Um, I think there was one question and it was from uh, Ms. Hartman regarding um, access issues that were historically there but uh, have since been resolved and easements are in place. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from the public on item 8E? Motion by Trustee Domingue, support by Treasurer Elliott to approve item 8E as submitted. Clerk Niza, please call the roll. Our Clerk Green, yeah. Demink? Aye. Elliot? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Joseph? Aye. Bosberg? Aye. Acrobati? Aye. Motion passes. Item 8F. Item 8F. Approve a recommendation by Facilities and Operations Department to purchase two Ford F-350 dump chassis, 4x4, I assume that's Super Duty SD, <laughs> regular cab, two Ford F-150 4x4 Super Crew cab, six and a half foot box, and one Ford F-350 4x4 Super Duty Crew cab, eight foot box from Russ Milne Ford at a total cost not to exceed $237,000. $999.04 from GL number 101-265-970.000. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Motion by Trustee Vosberg. Is there support? Support. Support by Treasurer Elliott. We are joined, uh, Director Sonnenberg, Ms. Mike Mullins and Jeremy are here with facilities and they got a short presentation, I believe. Yes, before I get started, I would just like to take a second and acknowledge uh, Jerry Alexi. I had the pleasure of growing up with a couple of his daughters and I guess the foundation of any community is family. And his kids, I know it's hard, I got one daughter, he raised three beautiful ones. They've been doing so many good things in the community. I know my kids are grateful. I coach soccer with his daughter and it's just, it's an honor to see what his kids have grown up to, so I thank you for that. Sorry. Um, getting back to the request, if, I believe there's a slide for that. Oh, thank you, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at the, so this request is based on uh, um, the purchase of five new vehicles. These vehicles were all, this purchased, or the funding was all approved in the 2021 budget. These are all based on um, Michigan State bid pricing. So, if you'll turn to the next slide, Mr. Acrobati. So I've been here for four years and this is the first vehicle purchase we brought to the board. And I would like to thank, sitting behind me, um, our fleet manager, Jer Jeremy, and our assistant director of facilities, Mike Mullen. They put a lot of work into this, trying to sum, we're, we're trying to sum it up as simple as possible. But our current fleet is on average about 13 years old and it's in really bad shape. But before we purchased any vehicles, we wanted to make sure we were going about it in the right way and being as efficient as we could possibly. So if you could turn it, I'll get, go through these. Could you turn to the next slide, Dan? Thank you. So what we're trying to do now moving forward is we did an evaluation, leasing versus buying. We went through every possible scenario. We sat with Brad and his team as they went through some of the national leasing plans. We looked at every possible option. The first thing we wanted to do is make sure we were getting trucks with the best possible resale. So that was the first thing we identified. And then we explored leasing versus buying. And what we found, thank you, Mr. Acovetti, is the current, our current uh, fleet is on average 13 years old and there's a sweet spot on a national average which is about five years. So at, the goal is to buy these vehicles at our state bid pricing, which is a lot lower than most people can purchase them, hold on to them to about five years and then sell them. What we do now is we keep them till the wheel fall off and we wind up doing a ton of maintenance to keep these trucks on the road. So if you'll go to the next, yup. So the next slide basically highlights our, our process. We're going to lower the age of the fleet, which will reduce operating costs, and we'll be able to provide a better budget moving forward. Next slide. Sorry. This is an example of what we're talking about. So this truck we purchased back in 2016 for $18,000, we could turn it in today for fourteen. dollars So what we used to do is we used to drive these trucks to the wheels fall off. If you can buy a truck, keep it for that long, and lose $4,000, it's a smart move. So all these national leasing companies, what they do is they come in, they use our buying power, they buy the vehicles for a state bid price and they lease them back to us. So we're essentially doing, we're using their best practices, but we're doing it in house. We have a fleet manager and we have all the capability to do that. Any questions for Director Sonnenberg or Mr. Mullins or Jeremy, fleet manager on item 8F from the board? 
Trustee Joseph. My, my question just had to do with some numbers in terms of the, I was trying to track in the uh, fund balance and the, the, um, the uh, ledger number that was cited. Um, you don't have the money there. So is there a budget amendment? Is there a recommendation for a budget amendment? Because um, of the uh, budget approved expenditures, you're in excess now. So originally what we, we did is we were gonna purchase four vehicles what we did once we did our evaluate, evaluation on that first truck and saw we could turn it in, now would be the prime time. We could turn that truck in for $14,000. So that will be, plus the auctions, will go back into the general fund. Now, the way we did this is we combined um, two, I have the notes back here, two funds. One was our additional vehicle purchase for 225000 Then we spent, we had another $8,000 budgeted for Salters and some outfitting. All those items are, all those items combined to our total price. So instead of getting the trucks and then sending them out to get salters on them, we're getting them all done and fitted and pulled into the yard. So what you don't see there is because revenue and expenses are separate, when we do turn this, the credit for the $14,000 for the truck plus the trade-ins aren't accounted for in this proposal. In other words, there'll be re revenue generated from this, but it goes into a separate account, which isn't reflected in this proposal. So tell me, tell me in the executive summary, um, I guess maybe, maybe uh, Mr. Supervisor, I want to be out of line, could we get uh, some feedback from Ms. Bauer? I know that you've done your homework internally, but I just want to be you know, yeah. fully transparent here. Sure. Um, Ms. Bauer prides herself on uh, award-winning audits, and I want to make sure that I understand from her that this is, uh, you know, consistent with... Okay. Du yeah, Director Bauer, um, I think he's looking at num um, uh, GL number 970. Yep, so that one for 2021 does have a fund balance remaining of $487,691.62. So that line item will cover the cost of the vehicles. And I think what Josh was speaking about is, because we keep talking about the, the sale of that vehicle will go into the revenue, the expenses will come out of the expense category. But that, that particular general ledger number does have enough money in it. You're um, saying le ledger number uh, it would be um, 101265970? Yep, zero, zero, zero. And that will cover the uh, proposed uh, um, uh, purchase? Yes, it has, again, it has about $487,000 in it budgeted. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Anderson. Yeah, Ms. Sonberg, just a question here, and uh, you folks are the vehicle gurus, and I just kind of wonder here, I'm looking at, you're purchasing uh, three 2022 Ford vehicles, uh, a couple 2021, the 2022s are like 22 grand more a piece, looking at the difference in the price listed here, I just wonder, um, why couldn't you all, I mean, I just, why, why the variation there in those two years going with the uh, next year's models on three of the vehicles there? Those are the vehicles after we did, we looked at, so, I mean, we looked at so much data, it's, it's hard to quantify it. We looked at um, every major manufacturer and these are the vehicles that they had available that we identified with the highest resale. We even went to drill down the details on these. We took a lot of time and looked at every single option. In fact, we approached all the local dealers saying, if you had to have resale on a truck, what's our best options? And you can see in this slide here, if you look, it's kind of fine print, but it shows the Kelly Blue Book value if we were bought, bought those trucks at our sweet spot about five years ago and trade them in. And you can see the one on the lower left, it's actually the resale value, if you brought it in, is actually more than what the current cost for us to purchase that truck is. Sorry, Jeremy's going to. If I can add, the F-350s are 2022 because they're not being produced in 2021. The F 150s are being produced in 2021 and they're the cheapest option. The two, two, the two F 150s are for the supervisor Sorry. trucks. <laughs> the two supervisors' trucks will be the F 150s and the other ones were the F 350s for the crews. Correct. My, my did, did you hear the part that no. the 2022s is because the F 350s are not being be produced in 21 anymore? It's a heavier vehicle, correct? And it's a heavier vehicle, and that's what's needed to pull all the stuff that the crew needs to pull and carry.
And I, I will gladly, we, tr we, we try not to give way too much detail, but we've sat and we've got binder after binder after binder. And like I said, we approach this with great caution. We took, I got here four years ago, one of the goals was to get on the fleet. And after talking to Brad, talking to other municipalities, Jeremy and Mike doing a ton of work, there's a lot of information behind the scenes and I will gladly sit with anybody at any time and drill down all these details to show you why we chose to go this route. Now, what we're gonna do when we do this is we're gonna take these trucks in and every time we take them in for an oil change, we worked out with a dealer, they're gonna give us a written estimate on that truck after the first year. So every time that truck goes in for an oil change, we'll have a running value of that truck. So we can plan a year in advance or two, okay, look, this truck's hitting its sweet spot, it's time to get rid of it now. And you'll see too, we're gonna to make adjustments like as simple as no more yellow paint. The, the resale value drops when you have yellow paint, so we're gonna to go to white or silver, like Macomb and other municipalities. All these little things we're doing, and I mean little down to every detail, is trying to give you the best value for the taxpayers as we can moving forward. Because we do, we spend a lot of money on vehicles, and we're in charge of that, and we're gonna make damn sure that we're doing that the best way possible. Any further comments from the board? Questions from the public? We have one coming up. Paul Lafada, 48055 Mallard. Um, I'm, I'm having a, a problem. Um, the uh, purchase request, um, the, the numbers don't tie out. Um, I'm, I'm looking at an expenditure of 237,000, almost 238,000 on the 2021 budget general ledger number that has $514,000 in it, supposedly. Start, it's, it started. The 2020 budget has been closed out and it only had, you can go back and look at page 85 on the budget that's on, on the website, which is part of the new budget that was approved by the board, only had $176,000 in it, unless somebody made some errors, which is possible, but then they didn't check their math and they didn't go back and look. But currently right now, if you look on page 85 of your current approved budget that's on the website, it's 514 in 2021, 176, in 2020. So there's not enough money to say I'm just taking money from 2000, adding 8,000, because the 2020 budget should be closed out. Uh, I, I don't understand it. And also there was a previous purchase, capital purchase of the super duper track lawnmower that went against that budget that lowered the original uh, budget amount from 514. So I don't know how you wind up in the executive summary with the remaining balance of $489,935 because the numbers don't tie out. They don't tie out in the 220 budget. They don't tie out in the 221 budget. There's some major errors. Uh, the other thing, um, there's another issue. Um, ever since we had a, a previous issue with the previous supervisor, it was common practice, and I don't know if it's official, but all vehicles went to auction because we sold vehicles with cracked frames. We had a cracked frame issue in the township where vehicles were sold and they weren't sold at auction. So all vehicles disposition in the township were supposed to go to auction. If you look at your paperwork from the dealership, there's a risk currently, special notice. Currently, you have job one pricing. There's a notice here that says job two pricing already started on May 10th. So you can't place the order to get job one pricing. There's telling us, telling you, that there's gonna be a possible upcharge that because there's no margins, will be passed down to the township. So there's a risk of an increased cost beyond the total amount not to exceed $237,000. So numbers don't tie, and there's some major issues with this because it should be cleaned up 
and brought back to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments from the public? We have one more coming in. Name and John. address for the record, please. John Speaker, 53978 Connor Drive. One of the first issues that I see with just looking at that is I see a price of $237,999. I want to see a breakdown, though, on how all five vehicles, how we came to a total of the 237999 I also noticed that Josh put a appraisal up there. I think it was $14,000, and if my memory calls me correctly, I think that's the truck you're currently driving, correct? Yep. Okay, that $14,000 appraisal it technically doesn't mean anything, and I'm gonna explain why it doesn't mean anything. If, and I'm gonna use simple numbers so it's easily understood. If a vehicle costs $20,000 and the institution knows that you want $14,000 for that vehicle, but it's only worth $10,000, they can roll the other $4,000 in. So are you really getting $14,000? You're getting $14,000 for the vehicle, but you're paying that extra $4,000. So not being able to see the exact numbers in the breakdown really does nothing. And at this point, I am highly confident, Mr. Supervisor, that we're overpaying by just looking at those numbers. And then the other issue I didn't, that I didn't hear is, why wasn't RAM looked at? Because I'm highly confident that if we would have looked at RAMs, we would have came in cheaper than what the uh, Fords came in. Then the other thing was, are these vehicles, my uh, primary concern on the vehicles were the two F-150s, the crew cabs. So are those crew cabs, are they gonna have trackers in them so that we can track them like we have trackers in other vehicles? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have trackers in them. And then are the vehicles gonna have the Chesterfield Township logo so we can show the pride of Chesterfield? That's another question. And why are we adding another vehicle to our fleet? Especially when gas prices are going up the cost is, with just gas alone, is just gonna be tremendous on the township. And going with the crew cab versus a regular cab, we're paying anywhere from four to $5,000 more per vehicle. And then, just out of curiosity, you know, I noticed that Josh's vehicle was up there for appraisal. Are, are we buying these two vehicles for Josh and Mike to drive? Because he's trading his vehicle in so he's gonna to have to have something drive. And do we allow the township employees to bring their vehicles home and to drive over the weekend or to just drive whenever they want? Thank you. Thank you, any further comments from the public? Uh, Director Bauer, would you please uh, be ready to jump in here? Uh, I do wanna point out, um, yes, the 2020 budget, we're referring to the first question, was but we did approve a budget of 179,000 in this line item. 2022, or I'm sorry, 20, the 2020 budget was 179. The 2021 budget was 514, you're correct in those numbers, and that's because this expenditure was anticipated and included in the budget. That's why the, the number was jumped up, primarily for this expenditure, and uh, finance director can jump into that. And, if uh, you feel necessary back there, I can't see you behind Mr. Sonnenberg. And you are more than welcome, Josh. To, oh, oh, there you are, hello. Yeah, I moved Hi up there. a little bit. No, that's correct. Speak a little bit about those two um, issues that former Treasurer LaPlata brought up. Um, well, I think you hit the, the nail on the head. We don't roll budgets forward. So in some, in some institutions, they'll take money that they hadn't spent in one year and move it to the next year. We don't do that. Every year is a um, fresh look at the expenditures that we need. Uh, in 2020, we did have the $176,000 budgeted. And then in 2021, when Josh was going through and doing his budget, he had the 514. 
So I guess really the answer is we do have the money sitting for the 2021 budget to cover those costs. Thank you. And other questions. My deal was used. Um, these are these are state pricing, and Mr. Sonnenberg and his team can speak to um, looking at the Rams, the the, uh, the Chevys, the we, we, Chrysler's. We, ex we the, export all options. Uh, all the Mr. Smash. Speaker's comments. We there's 50 pages of information with this agenda item, and I have no problem. You can come and sit with us at any time, and we can share unlimited amount of detail that went into this. And I can assure the public you know, that we are doing everything we can possible. If you came and seen our vehicles, we almost wanted to line them up outside so you'd get a good sense of what we're driving and why. We usually are the um, in for all vehicles. They go through the water department or the police department and then they were purchased in facilities. Well, if you want to look like a professional crew, it's almost embarrassing to have the logo that we have on some of our trucks. It is embarrassing. They're rusted out, they're falling apart, they're unsafe. So this goes back to our original mantra when we started here. We're starting with foundational stuff. Uh, fire life safety and this to me is a big safety item and we spent a lot of time and we waited till we had a fleet manager on board to make sure we were making good decisions and I promise you that's what we're doing here. Tre or Trustee Vosberg. Thank you Mr. Supervisor and uh, thank you to all of our staff, uh, Vicki and the fleet manager, Josh, everybody. All, for all the work that you do, I have the utmost confidence in you and in your ability to do the research to know what it is we need and I I thank you and I can't I can't thank you enough for, for doing all of this I wouldn't I could probably do it but it would take me a lo much longer time than than you did it had to take because you know exactly what it is we need and you're absolutely right about those um, some of those vehicles are an embarrassment when you see them out there and they're full of rust and they've got our logo on we we need to us uh, we need to step up, and I appreciate that you are seeing that and you're moving forward with this. Thank you. Trustee Joseph. Yeah, just echoing some of the comments of Trustee Bosberg, um, on a personal note, I, uh, I, I think I even said this today to you, Mr. Sonnenberg, in our conversation. I, I appreciate your presentations. They're, they're very detailed, and um, they're never, uh, at least the questions that I have, and sometimes I get a little abrasive, and they may come across as, accusatory and uh, that's not the intent but you've rolled with it historically over the years very well uh, you, you 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 typically come prepared to answer questions and um, you do you do a real solid job uh, in terms of investigating um, similar products um, I know only because of my work with public safety um, and I think uh, Trustee Domink even knows the uh, the family very well having uh, the, the in, in Sterling Heights this particular dealer was involved in a really high profile uh, auto theft ring, but Mr. Real has been a part of our community and he has always invested in helping us out uh, if he can with regard to vehicles. So I know in terms of product line, um, he would always uh, be, be willing to, and I can't imagine you escape this process without uh, a drive-by of what the Dodge product line and sometimes uh, it's just not compatible for what the need is so uh, if you lay out this is what we need and um, you you have people who are really committed he's a businessman but he's also committed to the best interests of the township i think he'd be the first one to tell you um, we don't really have a comparable product to match your need at that price uh, so i i don't know that you could have escaped this process in any way working with director kirsten and knowing what the real family has done for our uh, uh, canines and uh, canine equipped vehicles. So uh, I'm confident that that process was uh, fully vetted. In terms of the um, logos, I don't know that we have any uh, vehicles unless there's an unmarked uh, you know, operation, but everything that we own is, is logoed and marked. And um, take home vehicles are not, they, they really haven't been a part of anything that I'm aware of. We're not talking about emergency response vehicles where the individual driving the vehicle needs to be on scene. I don't know, um, and uh, personally, you live in the township, you're committed to the township. If you have something that you need to get to at night, uh, you're just uh, literally miles away from the township. So um, I don't, I don't wanna throw unnecessary mud in, 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 in the project. And the other point that was addressed, uh, and I think, I think rightfully so, because it was a big scandal and it was very embarrassing in our community and that 
was a, a very detailed account of um, the vehicles that were presented to this board as nothing but salvage vehicles, uh, cracked frames and cracked blocks and um, something that our township attorney was even asked during the deliberation, should these titles be stamped salvage only? I mean, that was the presentation, only to have one of those vehicles pulled over in the township exceeding the speed limit being driven by a relative of an elected official. So a policy of saying, look, uh, we don't do that anymore and we go to auction was a best practice at that point. But assuming that a fleet manager comes in and evaluates at what point it is appropriate to transition from the market value of this vehicle into something that serves the needs better is an ongoing process and a better process. I get a little bit worried though, I'll be honest, and I would like somebody to clear up for me. When we purchase new vehicles, my understanding is that we get a universal state rate, and I don't know how that works for used vehicles because um, as one of the speakers pointed out, and I know him, um, as a car guy, he is right. You go in, well, like, I'd like to stay at a $200 a month payment, and then the salesman works out all kinds of plans that keep you at a $200 a month payment until you're 95 years old. So they extend the length of the contract and maybe a few interest points and so forth. There's a number of ways to inflate a trade-in that maybe is only worth 10 and it's worth four, and then we roll it in some. So what's the policy in terms of used vehicles and when we purchase use, do we have the protection of a state rate in those so, transactions? Great question. So first of all, in regards to the state rate, so I'll use um, Ford vehicles um, as an example. So the way it works, just a quick summary is, there is there's a state rate locked in, different dealerships bid on different trucks, basically different F-150s and this and that, and there's a locked in number through the state that they negotiate that's locked in. Now, if you were to purchase that truck Let's say there's a dealer up in Grayling that got the contract for the Ford F-350s. There's a $200 fee if you buy that vehicle from anywhere else. So let's say our dealership, our Ford dealership in Chesterfield can tack on, Ford will tack on a $200 fee to pay the, guy, the dealer in Gaylord a little bit of extra money because he's the one who originally got that contract. So the only fluctuation in those state numbers at the base prices is roughly $200 from dealer to dealer in this scenario. So you're not, I mean, those numbers are locked in on the purchase side. Now, on the sales side or the auction side, different municipalities do it different ways. We are a firm believer in the auction because it's, you're not, not touched. It goes away and it's sold. We don't do anything with it. But what we wanted to explore is the trade-in option. Now, have we done that? No. We just wanted to give an example of what that vehicle was worth. They're saying you could take it to auction or wherever you want. We're just trying to put a value, that five-year number, that magic sweet spot, it does not make sense to keep those, and that's on a national basis. When you, when you interview every ma major leasing company, which was fantastic, they provided this huge data set that we went through. And there's a magic number there that if you can stay within that, right now in today's economy, four to five years, well, today is a little unrealistic because of resale, but average is four to five years, you can sell those vehicles. We could put them in auction. We'd still get a higher number than we're getting now. On average, what are we getting for the last truck that we auctioned? Make sure you address the board if you're going to. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just wanted to be clear, and we wait till those trucks are almost worth. It's not like I'll use an example of public safety. They're fantastic. They hit a magic number. They get rid of those vehicles. They've been doing this for a long time. We're trying to follow in that footstep before we get into a bunch of repairs. And when we do auction that vehicle, we get next to nothing. So go ahead. Sorry. I really don't think that it's valid to say what did we get for the last ones because every vehicle we have is not the same. They come with different equipment and everything. When you take them to the auction, it depends on who's there, what auction you take it to, how many people are coming. The last two vehicles we took had plows on them. They were four by fours. They were 2003 and 2004. We got $5,900 each for them. The previous auction we took to the Motor City auction, it had a salter in it. It was two wheel drive. It was a 19, or no, it was a 2000, and we got $500 or right around there. So it, it all depends. Now, this $14,000, they were willing to give us that on the spot. You could take it to another, maybe take it to an auction, possibly get 15,000. You might take it someplace else and get 12,000. You can put guarantees on them. That's just like Josh said, uh, a price that it's pretty much worth. And in today's economy, like you said, um, 
used vehicles since there's a shortage are going up and might be worth more when we go to sell it when we get those vehicles. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We have a motion by Trustee Vosburgh, support by Treasurer Elliott to approve item 8F as submitted. Clerk, Clerk Green, you please call the roll. Treasurer Elliott. No, one, one comment per, per, per our board rules, one comment per agenda item. Thank you. We have a motion by Trustee Vosburgh, support by Treasurer Elliott to approve item 8F. Clerk Green, yeah, please call the roll. Vosburgh? Aye. <coughs> Elliott? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Domink? Aye. Joseph? Aye. And Akabati? Aye. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Director Sonnenberg and to your entire team. Item number nine is the addendum. There are no addendum tonight. I would ask the board, we do expect an action item come out, coming out of closed session. I would, I would entertain if the board chooses to move public comments and board comments to after item number 13, which is the expected action item. So moved. Motion by Trustee Joseph. Support by Trustee Anderson to move item number 10 and item number 11 to the end of the agenda after closed session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by saying nay. Item, items 10 and 11 have been moved later down into the agenda. Item 12 is the closed session. Deputy Clerk. Oh. Yeah. Clerk Supervisor Green, yeah. motion to go into closed session. Support. Motion by Trustee Joseph, support by Trustee Domingue to go into closed session. Clerk Greenia, please call the roll. Joseph? Aye. 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 We are in closed session at 8.33 p.m.
Do I have a motion to re-enter open session? Motion to return to open session. Motion by Trustee Joseph. Support. Support by Trustee D Domingue to re-enter open session. Clerk Green, you please call the roll. Aye. 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 We are in open session at 9.04 p.m. Item 13. Item 13A. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to offer a slightly modified version of the uh, regular agenda item uh, listed in our agenda. And uh, specifically, I would ask the board to approve the, uh, or to allow the due diligence period to expire and to proceed with the purchase of the three parcels, uh, regardless of whether or not the parcels provide a potential alternative site for PI Tower. Motion by Trustee Joseph, is there support? Support by Trustee Vosberg. Discussion. Comments from the public. We have a motion by Trustee Joseph, support by Trustee Vosberg to approve the motion by, made by Trustee Joseph. Clerk Rina, please call the roll. Joseph. Aye. Vosberg. Aye. Anderson. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Going back to item number 10, public comment. Please state your name and address for the record and limit your comments to five minutes. All right. All right, Paul Manley, 48112 Fuller Road. Um, I've been coming here for a while, and I'm wondering how long it's going to be before we fix the uh, parking lot out there, because it, it, it's just been disgusting for about six years now. And I noticed that everything around here is fixed up except for the parking lot over there, and it just seems like it's way overdue. And... Uh, uh, Last year, we, we got a, a, ro a new roller. Uh, we traded in the Rosales and got another roller to replace it. And I've noticed on my street fuller where Chesterfield Township paid to have fuller uh, blacktopped, uh, a builder came across and they dug a hole across the road and they just threw some coal patch in it and now there's big bumps in there and it was otherwise a perfect road. And I was wondering if there's something we can do to get that done. Maybe the township would come over and put a hot patch on there and make it decent again. Uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manley. Any further public comment? Good evening, Township Board and Chesterfield Township residents. My name is John Spica. I reside at 53978 Connor Drive. It's a great feeling to be back in the people's house, our house. I'd like to start off by thanking all the township employees for all their hard work and dedication. I would also like to thank Ellen Clark for her hard work and loyalty to this township. Ellen Clark, Deputy Treasurer, thank you for keeping the Treasurer's Office a smooth running, well-oiled machine after Treasurer Lafada's departure. Supervisor Acovetti, I'm highly disappointed in you with how the township board meetings were handled for the last five months on Zoom. You used a Zoom format for the meetings but deliberately kept the residents, we the people, from being able to participate in a live format on Zoom. We had to submit our questions in writing to Cindy Berry to be read by Cindy Berry instead of being part of the live Zoom feed. Other boards in Chesterfield were using the Zoom format and letting residents participate on the live feed. To make matters worse, the residents couldn't even hear what was being said most of the time on the Zoom feed. Your decision to not let the residents actively participate on the Zoom meeting was foolish and unwise. 
You fumbled the ball on how you handled the township meetings in the middle of a global pandemic. Supervisor Acovetti, over 1,800 trash carts were delivered last year in the township at a staggering loss of more than $69,000 to the residents. I don't know how you think this is acceptable. I don't know how you sleep at night. I don't know any business that would stay in business losing that kind of revenue on a regular basis. I am fiscally conservative, and this is unacceptable to me. My suggestion to you is simple. Raise the price of the trash carts to a break-even point or scrap the program. It's pretty cut and dry. Weber Park is another huge issue in this township. This is another park where you have spent tens of thousands of dollars. Chesterfield Township was supposed to get $265,000 in grant funding that you promised we would get, and as of today, we have received zero dollars. I don't even see this on the 21 budget anywhere. My question is simple, are we gonna get the money? And if so, when do you plan on seeing that money hit our account? If we're not going to get that money, please explain to me why. Supervisor Acovetti, you've made quite a few comments in the last few months calling Treasurer Lafada a bully. I personally find these comments inappropriate and out of line. Treasurer Lafada is not a bully. He is, he is a dedicated veteran that has served his country. Not only has he served his country, he has served this township and continues to do so. Treasurer Lafada should get an apology from you. Miss Elliott, the treasurer's position is a full-time job. The key word is full-time. That doesn't mean you bring your kids into the office, leave for lunch, and not return the rest of the day. If you think that's ethical, your priorities are misplaced. How about the water bill that you sent out in January of this year that threatens to slap a lien on residents' home for any amount past due after the due date? Ms. Elliott, you did this to the residents right in the middle of a global pandemic. How ethical is that for you to continue attacking someone's Sicilian heritage and make false accusations against them? The other day on Nextdoor, you specifically made a comment that referenced me and Treasurer Lafada. How ethical is it, in my opinion, to file a false police report against a sitting treasurer for political gain? This type of behavior you continue to display is troubling to me. This tells me you will say or do anything to anyone that you feel is a threat to you or your position, and that to me is dangerous. Your main focus should be making sure our fund balance doesn't continue to get depleted and keeping Supervisor Acovetti spending in check and not rubber stamping everything he wants. Ms. Elliott, you should know as well as anybody that Supervisor Acovetti loves to spend the residents' money and grow the township government. How many new employees has Supervisor Acovetti hired since taking office? How many of these employees did he start off at top pay? How many of those new employees are friends of friends? We have an out of control spending and growing the government supervisor that needs to be kept in check and that is your job. Your top priority should be making sure that Supervisor Acovetti stops wasting the residents' hard earned money on projects like Brandenburg, Weber, AEW, subcontracting all the grass and snow out, growing government, his trash, uh, trash cart program that's lost money for the residents since day one. Ms. Elliott, Ms. Elliott, I think you get my point and focus on the job and stop the campaigning, the elections over and- well, 10 seconds. Mr. Acovetti, you violated your own rules when you didn't let Mr. Lafada Three, come back two, up. Three, two, one, all done. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Spica. Speaker. Any further Speaker. public- Speaker, S-P-I-C-A. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any further public comment? All right, Mike Wharton, 50393 Bauer. Uh, I just wanted to point out the uh, importance of the uh, master plan in uh, pedestrian walkways and bikeways. As a resident who uh, grew up I as a kid in the 90s and 2000s, I can tell you this is not a family-friendly or kid-friendly environment uh, in the township. It was definitely difficult growing up, uh, not being able to walk or ride a bike anywhere. Um, and I still find that today as a runner. It is 
very atrocious in the county and the region to not be able to have the mobility as a pedestrian, uh, especially when outdoor activities are so vital in Michigan. Uh, having uh, this plan is definitely very beneficial for the long-term growth of the township, although it should have been done a long time ago. And I would like to point out a definite prioritization of um, all of Sugarbush Road as you have four schools, these township offices, and the flanking of uh, the nearby Weber Pedal Park uh, at one end and the new library at the other. I think that should be the ultimate prioritization in this plan. Uh, oh, and the, ve the new veterans home is there. It looks like a broken puzzle piece of sidewalks that ultimately have almost no connection and I think we need to uh, prioritize on that road as well as all the other roads in the, in the plan. Otherwise, no one's gonna really want to live here long term and raise a family if they can't have proper pedestrian uh, mobility. Thank you. Thank you for the public comment. Paul of 48055 Mallard Drive. And I'd like to thank uh, Treasurer Elliott for the invitation to come back and comment what she posted on uh, Nextdoor website. I did not send an email to Treasurer Elliott. I sent an email to Supervisor Acovetti. I made no credible threats to Supervisor Acovetti or Treasurer Elliott. Read the police report. Treasurer Elliott has stereotyped me and is bias and prejudice against my Sicilian heritage. She's been watching too many Godfather reruns. If Treasurer Elliott would read the last sentence in my Sicilian heritage, instead of twisting the intent, there was an evolution that Sicilians are compelled by nature to enforce the rules of fairness and are frustrated when we cannot. When I am frustrated, I write. In 2020, the primary election was election strategy was dirty and unethical. I wrote an email and sent it to Supervisor Acovetti. He was the person responsible for that strategy, not Treasurer Elliott. I did a paste on Treasurer Elliott's campaign flyer and I sent it to Supervisor Acovetti. If you check Elliott's with, with a note on it, it paid for by Supervisor Acovetti. If you check the campaign donations on the Macomb website, you'll find out that most of Treasurer Elliott's campaign was paid for by Supervisor Acovetti and his family. When, Chester, when Treasurer Elliott FOIA'd request for all the emails that I sent to Supervisor Acovetti, since it was going to become public, I did copy all of the board members and the department heads. That's how they got a copy of that flyer. When it did become, when did it become a crime to send FOIA information verse via township email that Treasurer Elliott requested? I pay my taxes and my water bill on time. I am a law-abiding citizen. I have not had a parking violation in over 40 years. When in office, I tried to address the operational issues that created unnecessary expenditures. I have served my country proudly in the United States Army as a combat infantry um, man in Vietnam in 1968 and 1969. Today, as a Chesterville resident, I try to utilize my over 35 years of business management and exper experience and skills to bring checks and balances to the township expenditures for the benefit of Chesterfield taxpayers. My reward is deflamination on a website and character harassment and name calling. It needs to stop. Thank you. Thank you, any further public comment?
Moving up to board comment, Trustee Anderson. Uh, thank you. Uh, prior to this meeting, I had a couple couple remarks with Mr. Domink, and we were trying to figure out, is this our first meeting since the election? I don't know if we figured out uh, if that out or not, if this is our first one back in with the pandep pandemic. But uh, uh, I do want to say is that uh, the primary election of this uh, past July, as well as the November election, there was a lot of shenanigans, characters, assassinations, outward lies may have originated from members that are on this board. I'm not saying for sure. Uh, it's kind of hard to sit and have great faith and trust in people when individuals will go to that election uh, or go to that degree during an election to knock some people out and uh, try to guarantee their return. So I'll stop right there on that, on, on that vein. I'd rather not revisit it unless people want to Keep bringing it up. Mr. Lovada uh, on our first uh, board, it was Mr. Lovelock was a supervisor. He was an active participant in the Water and Sewer uh, Commission, working with that, uh, the police moratorium. His expertise, he deals with numbers. He knows how to read, you know, graphs. He's aware of it. Uh, I don't question him when it comes to that. I've never seen him to as far as addressing those things, speaking in superlatives, in adjectives, but in facts, and he can pr you produce them for you too. Uh, Mr. Alexi, uh, congratulations for tonight for uh, your service to your township, and Mr. Joseph and the board, uh, you'll be respected for passing resolution uh, 2012, uh, declaring June 21st uh, as LGBTQ uh, uh, Pride Month, and finally um, the resolution regarding May 9th through the 15th is a, a National Police Week, especially in the times we live in. Uh, good to be back on the farm here, instead of uh, staring at screens and uh, you know the, what we've done the last few months. It's not a way to conduct business, but we're back here, and it's good to see that we had our residents show up here today, and I hope that continues. Thank you. Trustee, <coughs> Trustee Joseph. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, first, thank you to the board. The um, approval of the um, initially presented as a resolution and later changed to proclamation uh, recognizing Pride Month next month is um, really a heartfelt thank you for that. Um, in addition to the preparation for that um, agenda item, I had a great conversation with uh, Trustee Vosberg. Um, we're friends from way back. Uh, we, we, um, we, we've worked together at the county with some of the most vulnerable people and families, um, not only during her time as a commissioner, but also her service on the uh, mental health board. Uh, she cares very, very deeply, and she's also a, um, a devout Christian. I think she, she tries to live, um, she tries to live a very spiritual life. There are some things that are difficult to talk about. And as we move forward and we uh, try to find the things that bind us, um, this, is, this, was a, this was a real test for me uh, in terms of how people might receive this uh, because the, 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 the climate uh, in our country is so divisive and things that involve love and mutual respect have somehow become um, political stands and they're not, they shouldn't be. And uh, if you subscribe to the uh, adage that all politics are local, it starts with us. And while a small proclamation um, recognizing the dignity and respect of an entire group of people, um, we, we took no real action to, to, to take any uh, and make any activities except to simply say that in this community, we recognize the value and importance of all peoples. Um, that, that was a big, big moment for me, and I appreciate the conversation leading into um, tonight's board meeting. So thank you, uh, Trustee Vosberg. Um, there are a number of issues that will continue to divide us uh, in terms of um, priority. I think, I think that, that, that is the uh, quintessential ingredient in a number of the things. Um, we have a police, a public safety liaison committee. Um, Trustee Anderson and I serve on that. And um, last week we had a meeting. 
it had the potential to cause a great divide. I, I took issue with a number of things, um, and I appreciate uh, Supervisor Acovetti. Um, I didn't think we were going to get there. Uh, the you know the email response after the meeting. I thought, oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, but there was an invitation to me, and I appreciate that because it uh, it it gave us an opportunity uh, in a in a closed setting. No 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 other individuals, no um, you know public, uh, and just a very heartfelt conversation where. Um, there was an opportunity to air some grievances and some concerns. And one of the things moving forward that I pledge to try and do is uh, some of the things that I continue to have reservations about are not because I think that the project is a bad idea. So uh, one that gets a lot of mud and it turns into sarcasm and, and, uh, and a lot of it is my own doing, um, but it gets contentious unnecessarily is because I feel uh, placed in a box where the decision to approve or to vote for or against something, uh, as it's as if it happens in a vacuum. So the question is, do you support a Brandenburg shoreline project? And it's not, it's not quite that simple because um, I, yes, of course, it's a wonderful project and there are a lot of great things happening with that project. But then you say to yourself, does it prohibit our ability to do the things that maybe uh, Mr. Manley pointed out? You know, we have a parking lot that maybe needs attention. And that's just one example, and the question becomes, can you walk and chew gum? Are they the same pots of money? Can you do these? But there are a number of variables that have to be considered, and there are tremendous needs in this township. Another uh, speaker talked about the connectivity of sidewalks and bike paths. Uh, that's, a big, that's a big issue. That's a real big issue if you're a, a, a family with young kids and you have a stroller and one kid that's learning to bike and you got to go over grass or tr cross a major intersection. So there are a number of projects that are, that are valuable and it is in the um, division of triaging them or prioritizing them that we run into a potential conflict. And uh, again, um, taking responsibility for areas that I haven't always handled those in the best possible way. Um, and, and pledging to try and do better. Um, again, I'm, uh, I'll do my best. And I appreciated the, the phone call and the, uh, the, the video meeting where uh, we, I think, reached some consensus on how we will try to navigate those things. And in the same way we did with this proclamation, we'll look for the things that bind us whenever possible. Um, so being able to, uh, Director Kirsten, to, to look at the things that we talked about in the liaison meeting, the public safety meeting, and then having a conversation with the supervisor, the um, personnel director, our HR director, who said, I, 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 I may be able to contribute some things here because it involves different departments, and I got a good grasp on that, and then following up with uh, Mr. Sonnenberg. And, uh, I, I think in that process, we were able to see all of the, uh, you know, areas of how we work together to resolve something, which is what I think the people really want us to do. Um, there is a huge, uh, there is a huge, um, and it's difficult not to look in the rearview mirror because uh, listening to and watching as Trustee Anderson laid out, there, there are some things that are very, very difficult for me to heal from, uh, I know that I have to keep trying because it is what the people expect us to do, but to watch how the things unfolded last August and in November, truly uh, one of the greatest disappointments I've ever experienced politically, uh, somebody who served their country and was actually declared dead uh, because of uh, their involvement, their, their unfortunate uh, position when enemy fire took out an entire uh, group of service members, people that you, that you held, uh, Mr. Lafada, in your hands as they took their last breath, and for political reasons, you were called a traitor. You were called a traitor because you objected to a policy that involved guns in the workplace that you thought put your people in your charge in, in harm's way. And when you stood out against that, you were called a traitor. The individuals that did that were embraced by people who were looking to make political hay, and it's very, very hard for me to let that go, and I agree with Trustee Anderson. I don't know that I'll ever be able to let that go. 
but there is enough room on the board to work for cooperation in the uh, agenda items that impact the residents that we serve. And it hurts me deeply uh, to see what happened to you. And um, I don't know how I, I don't know how I really get past that on a personal level, on a professional level, and as a trustee trying to serve this community, I know that I have to set that aside in some areas, and this is not the appropriate venue to, to re hash those things and on some level I have to let go of the rearview mirror but I haven't forgotten about them and they will forever be with me um, and they're hurtful and um, I uh, shared this with Supervisor Accavetti in our conversation uh, this past Friday I've run into people that knew uh, Treasurer Lafada in his professional uh, capacity he was somebody who could be on the shop floor with tremendous pressure to turn around a factory that was underperforming and his entire livelihood was at stake his ability to to take care of his family was uh, at stake and he made decisions in a very dispassionate way based on data and fact and i've had people come to me that knew him in that capacity that said what in the hell did politics ever do to him i never heard the guy raise his voice and to see the level of of response and i think unfortunately that's what politics does to some people it's an it's a world very unfamiliar to you and you've worked in some very very difficult places including uh, Southeast Asia where people were trying to kill you literally and you were able to make dispassionate decisions based on data and fact and yet you came here and uh, you experienced something you hadn't seen anywhere in the world and you've been all over the world with good cause you were treated unfairly disrespectfully and uh, disgracefully and so I don't blame you but um, I would ask that uh, when you come to the board try to try to um, resurrect that citizen activist that was on display every time you came to the board prior to your service as the treasurer it's effective it's needed our township needs citizen watchdogs and people that can come to the board and focus on issues that are um, most relevant today so uh, again I, I give you some advice that I'm trying to take myself don't allow what occurred to you what, what happened to you to taint you to change you it's not it's not who you are uh, and I say that as somebody with immense respect for you and a friendship that is uh, bone deep I, I really do have tremendous respect for you and I don't want to see you angry I don't want to see you uh, defending positions of Sicilian heritage and slurs on your ethnicity or any of that kind of thing. I don't want you to internalize that and stay focused on, on um, what makes you a tremendous asset to this township. So um, lastly, I'd just like to say, Mr. Supervisor, you uh, gave me some constructive criticism and I didn't, I didn't take it real well in the meeting on Friday. I spent some time over the weekend thinking about it. I have always um, rolled out my corny little uh, snow cone machine I've taken it over to the historic village and I make a point to attach myself to anything that director Kirsten has going with kid print or uh, any any law enforcement function and um, I talked to uh, Mr. Sonnenberg today and I know that his department is working very closely with leisure services I'm going to reach out to trustee Domink and director uh, Amanda Bowers to talk about how we can um, I think some support for some other projects around the township are, are worthwhile and it's what I like to do uh, I really do uh, anybody that knows me knows I'm out there with badge 55 uh, mr. Riker is working on breaking the community service hours record for the high school next year and I think uh, he and I will be out serving snow cones to anybody who wants them and uh, you know just being an advocate for a number of other uh, worthwhile causes and things that we have going on in the township so um, trustee Vosberg if the Historical Society would like a uh, snow cones or uh, Parks and Rec um, I'm, I'm uh, more than willing to uh, to call my buddy and badge 55 and I will be out and um, thanks for a great uh, board meeting tonight thank you trustee Domingue next week Monday we're having a special board meeting regarding the sidewalk issues and the repairs coming up with engineering so that's open meeting next week Monday and on Tuesday there'll be another planning commission meeting we've got a lot of things going on uh, with the township and uh, we had a meeting last week we wanted to rezone some property on 23 basically where the uh, 
driving range was to go to uh, apartments that was denied by a uh, unanimous uh, planning commission board. So that will not be occurring. Uh, there's some development uh, for the property that's located on 23, just east of Meldrum's, uh, sort of where the old uh, hamburger place was. Uh, there's some looking at some different uh, development there for residential with commercial up front. So that will be coming back. Uh, we've got a lot of issues on planning. If you're interested, check the website. But uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, as I come in every Friday, it's usually my day here. I come to the township. I always check in with building and planning. And uh, building department's going crazy. House permits are going nuts. A lot of building going on, commercial stuff going on. So uh, Chesterfield's moving right now, even though with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And to uh, all my brothers and sisters in law enforcement, uh, being that this is police week, uh, stay safe. It's a crazy environment out there. As Trustee Anderson and I know, it's changed from our days a lot. I, mean, I deal with it from a different uh, standpoint now, being inside. To, to be on the road nowadays, it's a whole different ball game. And uh, be safe, everybody. It's crazy out there. Thank you. Trustee Vosberg. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be back here in person. This is, a, this is our first in-person meeting since the election. And I'm glad, too, that we've had um, productive conversation with a fellow trustee on the board. I'm glad that uh, we can see our fellow employees back here again who can answer questions right away and um, who actually, in looking at them and watching them, helps um, to understand the the issues better than when we're just talking at this monitor on our desk so this has been great and i'm um, also glad to finish the citizen planner class it was something that um, i was asked to do as a member new member of the zoning board of appeals and because of that class i have a new appreciation for the planning process in the past i, I would um, i participated in many focus groups over the years for plan various planning things, but then to learn what happens with all that information that comes back from the um, those meetings and how it becomes a technical document that is something that we depend on to use as a township to um, that we can move forward with our improvements in planning and purchases. And I'm glad that we are moving forward and that we are making purchases that enhance the quality of life for our residents. And finally, I'm very glad to be at my first meeting with my friend, um, Kathy Elliott, our new treasurer. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. A um, couple of uh, responses to the public comments tonight. A couple of things that are um, very disappointing. Um, one of the things is is that the deputy treasurer Ellen Clark has asked um, many of the board members here that to not drag her into the political arena. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I think she would appreciate it if, if you would probably not bring her name into the political arena. She's she does a good job, but it doesn't make it easy on her. And so, out of respect for her, um, I I would ask that you would you know if you have things to say that that you leave her out of it. And the other thing that was very disappointing is that, um, yes, I did bring, my daughter did bring my granddaughter, who's three years old, to my office to see. And um, it was late in the day, and yes, I left. That doesn't mean I don't work full-time. Lots of full-time people do that. So I'm a little bit disappointed that Mr. Speak is politicizing something. That was a, a family moment for um, my granddaughter to come in and to see my office as she requested a little three-year-old little girl dragged into politics. Um, it, the political season is over, and um, the uh, conversation on the Nextdoor app that Mr. Speaker talks about is actually, it was about sidewalks, and it was trying to help people. There's a lot of questions in my neighborhood because my, where I live, um, I'm walking around, and um, people are asking me a lot of questions and um, about the sidewalk um, meeting that we have coming up and those types of things. So um, Mr. Speaker felt the need to comment on it and um, turn it into um, politics and um, brought Mr. Lafada's email um, and there was no uh, slander um, 
I had simply invited, you're welcome, Mr. Lafada, to read your email to the public. And if that would make you better, make you feel better, I, I say, read it yourself. I'm not going to read it out of respect for you. Um, I do not agree with where you feel like it was no big deal. Um, I don't agree with the fact that you alter my campaign finance, uh, my campaign pieces, I'm sorry. You alter my campaign pieces and you send them on a public email from your public email to public emails. And the next board meeting, you're welcome to read it if you think it's okay. That's on the, that's your, my, mine from the next door app, is that what it is? Okay. But I think we should heed to the advice of others that um, I heard today. What I'd like to do is let it rest. I don't agree, you don't agree with me, and we could let it rest. Um, Mr. Joseph um, talked about the golden rule. Treat others the way that you wanna be treated. And this is a new year, it's a new day, it's been very tough for a lot of people. And um, we can nitpick and carry on, but there's bigger things to think about than um, what people say on social media. Um, I let the email go, and I was very disappointed that Mr. Speaker had to bring it back up during a conversation on sidewalks, and um, he had asked a legitimate question, and it deserved a legitimate response, but then it segued to, well, can't, to politics. And um, so I'm gonna say that if, out of respect for you, Mr. Lafada, I'd like to just let it go. I'd like to see you move on and concentrate on the things that are important to you. And I hope that you choose to do that. Thank you. Thank you, nice to be back in person. Um, lots more, pro much more productive. Trustee Joseph, I truly appreciated our conversation. I think it can be used as a foundation, maybe a stronger foundation, because we have had a, you know, throughout the last couple years, um, that only lasted for a certain period of time, but I feel better about this one. Um, if we can stick to the policy and have very strong um, debates and discussion about how to move the township forward without any personal attacks from either end, I think um, our residents and our community will be served a heck of a lot, heck of a lot better. And I think we built a foundation to, uh, to move forward in that direction. Um, a couple of the public com comments, Mr. Manley, you do come to a lot of meetings. You're very, very sharp. Um, our website has bid openings, a lot of information in my phone call. You can always call me. Um, obviously, the, the, if you look on the website, parking lot opening, bid opening is uh, next week. About, about three years working on that project. Bridge is failing. It's a substantial, and I mean substantial, investment to repave the parking lot, the loop. And it also was a substantial lift, um, making sure that it, we had the best solution. You got to look at new bridges, uh, dual bridges, concrete bridges, replacement bridges, um, the entire piece that's been multiple years um, in the making, and bid openings are coming up. So I'd, I'd re really recommend you look at all those, uh, look on the website and, and give me a shout because you, you're going to be very impressed with the amount of information that can be right at your fingertips. Um, Fuller Road, again, reach out. If we can help, we will. Um, when it comes to roads, we have very little we can do. Um, townships don't own any roads. It's either county or it's private or it's MDOT, period. No ifs, ands, or buts. No, township does not own any roads. They're either private. No, I'm not here to argue with you. These are facts. Townships do not own roads. They're private. They're county or their MDOT. If we can help, we will. Um, depending on the severity of the private road, it may require a special assessment district. Um, we will assist you with that. So please reach out to myself or Kevin Johnson. The other public comment, uh, Mr. Wharton, it was nice to see you at the State of the Bay um, connecting our sidewalks. And if you listen to that, uh, that event, which I know you did, is a priority. That um, I ran over the non-motorized path master plan, the complete streets, those are all pieces of the puzzle. I would urge you uh, as well to come on in and I'll throw, I'll throw the, my map up in front of you, all the projects, all the complications and your vision 
is uh, ex exactly and high up on the list um, for this whole, whole piece of the puzzle. So I thank you so much for uh, your public comments. Our next meeting is May the 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. That's our next regularly scheduled board meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Trustee Domingue, support by Trustee Vosberg to adjourn. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Opposed by saying nay. We adjourned at 9.44 p.m. Thank you and have a good evening.